Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Stay in Touch Product Enhancements, version 5.66, 5.67, and 5.68 combined, add-on and add-on tax bundles, guest bill entity without routing, and more, presented by Stay in Touch Implementation Consultant, Natasha Leck. I'm your host, Aaron Fisher, the content writer here at Stay in Touch. Today's presentation will cover how you can get the most out of the version 5.66, 5.67, and 5.68 product releases. In this webinar, we will explain how to configure add-on bundles and add-on tax bundles, demonstrate how to create group shared notes, show that a, group's note, note, a group notes action type is recorded in the group activity log, demonstrate the new way to refund guest card transactions uh, from the guest bill, explain how to create a guest bill entity without routing, the enhanced, with share, enhanced, enhanced share with functionality, illustrate language, title, works at, and opt-in fields for the guest card, discuss updated enforced country sort order, discuss the new incomplete, incomplete rate tag, illustrate the update to the reports inbox, no reports message, show the display of weekly add-on count during reservation creation, explain Stantage IB enhancements, cover updated iHotelier and Travel Click message types, and finally discuss enhancements to connect APIs. We will have a short Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Feel free to submit questions throughout the presentation and we will answer them in the order they are received at the end. And that's all I have right now. Natasha, I'm going to hand the presentation over to you. All right, good morning and afternoon, everyone. Um, we're, I'm going to show you now uh, the topics of 566, 567, and then 568, the one that Aaron has just mentioned. Um, so let's dive right in. Uh, the first topic is about add-on bundles and add-on text bundle. So it is now possible to have a, or to create a generic bundle for rates with add-ons and taxes to show as a single line item on the guest bill. So the way that we do this is we're going to go into our settings. Settings again. We move into rates. And then from here, we have the option rate and add on setting. Here you can enable the option for add on bundle and you can enable the option to bundle the taxes for the add ons over here. And here we can also add the description. And this description is what is going to display on the guest bill or on the invoice as well. Um, there, there are certain toggles that you can not toggle on if one of them is, uh, or not toggle off if some of them are on. For example, I'm not able to toggle off this option right over here. Uh, this one can be toggled off and then this one can be toggled off. So it does have a specific uh, flow that you need to adhere to when you're toggling them on. Um, and once this is set up, so we have our description in here, we can then create our um, package rate or move into the rate where you want to bundle the add-ons. I have created a package rate already because what I would like to show here is that under the rate details, and then scroll down a little bit for the add-ons. Here we can decide that we want to um, add this to the price of the rate, and then we want to bundle it. If you move um, any of these to include in price, uh, bundle, as you can see, I'm trying to click now, is not an option. Bundle is only an option when it is added to price. All right, so I have now uh, two add-ons here that I have uh, set up to add to price and bundle. And this is what that will then look like on the reservation. So if I now go to my reservation, I've already pre-posted the charges on this bill. In my bill and charges, I can now see here that I have my add-on bundle and add-on text bundle. And if I open these up using the orange arrows, you'll be able to see the actual charges. And then over here, 
you'll be able to see the taxes that have been bundled. Now, obviously, this is the text that we've set up in that uh, rate and add-on bundle setting. Um, so you can make this text whatever you'd like it to be. And this is going to display on the detailed bill. If I now print this, you'll be able to see here. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so everyone can see it. You'll see here now that you have the option add-on bundle and add-on text bundle. This is how it will display on the invoice. Um, this is the case for the detailed bill. Um, if you print, for example, the pro forma invoice, this is going to show um, all charges by themselves. So this is really something that we'll be using. Let me just open this as well. So here you can see that this is now broken uh, up again. So this will only be for the detailed bill. Now, there's also the option um, to have um, the rate name display on the folio in a rate setting. So let me just go back to my package rate. Here we have the option in rate details to say, okay, display the rate name on the bill folio. If this is toggled on, it will use the rate name instead of the description that we have set before. So let me just save this. If I now go to the reservation, you'll see that this now says package rate instead of the add-on bundle that I had previously. So if you toggle that filter or that toggle on, that takes um, importance over what you have said in the rate and add-on settings. All right, so that was the first topic. Um, the second topic is relating to group shared notes. So let me just go to my group. So we'll move into our menu, groups, and in this case, I'm gonna go to manage group because I already have a group. Now, if you have um, the option for files um, toggled on in your property, uh, you'll be able to see uh, the group notes under notes and files, uh, like in my property here. Um, if you don't have that toggled on, it'll display under here, uh, which is the normal process. Just for you to know, this is where normally the notes would be. So in your notes, whenever you write a note, Let's say we're going to put our group note in here. As soon as you click on post to all group members, um, every single reservation that is part of the group will have this note on the state card. So let me post that. If I now go to my rooming list and I go to one of my reservations and I go to the state card, you'll see on here that I have my group note from here, and you can see that this comes from the group as well here on the right hand side, and I am not able to delete it or make any changes to it. The only way that you can make changes to the group note is by going back into the note. Here you can see as well that it's been posted to all group members, and then I can click on it, group note change, and save. This will be the way that you can make changes to that note. Um, it is also possible to deactivate the post to all group members toggle. Um, by doing this, if I now go to the rooming list and I go to my state guard, you'll see that that note has been removed from the reservation. So as soon as you untoggle that, <laughs> or unselect that I should say, um, it will not display on the reservations anymore. All right, and then um, the second part that comes with that is that all the changes to group nodes are now recorded in the activity log. So um, we've made a lot of changes. Let me also delete this comment so that we should see that as well. If I now go to the activity log, um, you'll see here when I create my group and you'll see the, or my notes, sorry, You'll see the details here, and you'll see as well is shared. So you'll see here whether or not I'm sharing that note with all group members. 
You'll see it when an edit is made, as well as when the is shared gets changed, and once it is deleted, all of those actions you'll be able to see here in the activity log. All right, the next topic is relating to refunds. So I'm just going to switch over to another property. So uh, for refunds now, um, in order to refund a credit card transaction, if you go to the purple pencil on the bill and charges screen, we now have this wonderful refund button where you can basically decide exactly which payment you'd like to refund. And by clicking um, on that button, we'll be able to refund on the card. The amount will be there automatically and we can refund from here. All right, next topic is going to be relating to guest card fields. So when we go to our menu and back into our settings, we'll go to our cards and then guest card fields. Here we have added um, four additional options. Let me scroll down to the bottom to get to those guest card fields. So here you can see we now have the option for language, title, works at, and opt in. And then we have these two options here, which will work the same way as it works for all the other guest card fields. If you toggle these on, it means that they'll be visible. And then here you can decide whether it's going to be mandatory to be filled in yes or no. And here you can decide when it's going to be requested. So if I now go to um, a guest card, so I can show you. Let me move into my departure or my reservation. And I'm going to open my guest card. Here you'll now be able to see language right over here. You'll see the works at option. We'll have the opt in here on the right hand side and the title right here at the top. Um, then just as a note uh, for customers using Stay in Touch IBE, we have made uh, the following enhancements. Um, it is now possible to have a calendar widget on your own website. Um, and we also have added translation features for add-ons, room types, and replans. So this is specifically for customers that are using Stay in Touch IBE. All right, so then we continue to release 5.67, and we're gonna move into um, the guest bill changes. So Stay in Touch now supports guest bill entities without routing to, for example, issue invoices for accompanying guests or different company or TA cards with their details on it. So if I move into my reservation, I already have an example ready. Here I have a reservation with two guests where one already has that accompanying guest in there. And then I also have um, a company card and a TA card associated with this reservation. I have all of them ready to show you. So when we move into our bill and charges, um, the first bill, bill number one, is always going to be for the main guest. That is very important to note. And what we can then do is when we create bill number two, here on the right hand side, we can click on the payment method. This is where they can be edited. And then I can select the who is going to pay. So here I'll see my main guest, my secondary guest, or my accompanying guest, I should say. And then I have my company card and my travel agent card. Um, here I can select for the accompanying guest what way they're going to pay. Um, if I select credit card, then um, I will have the different credit cards that are part of this reservation. I can select which one I want to use. For routing, um, for example, for my company card, I have routing in place. Um, if I try to make a change here, it is not possible to change the entity. Then, as you can see here, for example, um, this travel agent card does not have uh, bill routing in place. And again, I'm able to make changes to it, same as what I already did for bill number two. 
Now, um, if an accompanying guest is removed from the reservation, any bills associated with this guest will be moved to the primary guest. So you'll see here that this is still on my accompanying guest, but if I remove the accompanying guest from here, perfect, and I go back to my bill, number two, you'll see that this is now back on my primary guest. Um, if you work with void bill, if this is activated for your property, um, it will work as per usual and it'll keep the associated entity attached to it. So it'll work um, exactly the way that it uh, was, was or is already working. Um, all right, so the next topic is relating to the weekly add-on. So let me create a reservation so that we can get into the screen. So here I have created a weekly add-on um, as an example. And now you can see that once this gets added, uh, the posting type will display correctly in the enhancement screen. So over here as well, if I click on my enhancements, we'll be able to see that it correctly says flat every week as posting type over here. Another exciting new feature is uh, the incomplete rates. So I'm going to move back into my settings, rates, and then rates again. And uh, Basically what we've done is rates can now be saved without completing all mandatory fields. So uh, you don't have to have uh, the room types and the rates in there yet, for example. Um, they will, you'll be able to save them, but they will show as incomplete and the status will automatically be disabled. So um, I have, of course, an incomplete rate uh, already ready for the webinar. Um, as you can see, this is grayed out at the moment and the status is toggled off. But if I go into my rate, I'm able to make all the changes that I want to it. So as you can see here, I filled in most of the details, but I haven't, for example, selected my room types. Therefore, this is incomplete and it will be marked as such. And you already saw me do it. Uh, if you wanna find your incomplete rate, we have this new toggle over here at the top, which says show incomplete rate. Once this is selected, it'll display the rates that still need to be completed. Um, as you can see, as soon as I select show incomplete rate, the show inactive rate button is automatically going to be selected. Um, this does not work the other way around. So whenever you click on show incomplete rate, this one will always also be activated but I can deactivate this one, and then I can also see all my inactive rates without showing incomplete rates. All right, so once all mandatory fields are updated, um, the rate will be marked as complete, and the status can be set to active. So as you can see now, I can't do it, but if I move into my rate, select a room type, and continue configuring my rate. Let's see if we're complete now. Yes, perfect. Let's have a look. Now you can see that because I've filled in all my details, the status has now been toggled on. All right. Um, as a side note, uh, there have been some updates to the travel click and I, slash iHotelier integration. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to show this, but I'll just mention it um, for everyone to know. So house level and room type level cell limits are now supported, um, as well as custom daily rates for groups. And for hotels where tax is inclusive, we now support the amount after tax tag in reservation and rate messages. Um, if you have any questions on this, please uh, contact support so that we can help you uh, with your other integrations to set this up correctly. All right, uh, country sort order is going to be the next topic. 
So here in hotel and staff, uh, we have our countries list now. Uh, this used to be in guest mobility. Uh, this has now moved into hotel and staff for anyone that has been searching for it. And here in countries, you can toggle on sort order, and then you can add the countries that you want to have on top of your list. So normally with nationality uh, or country, you'll have your A to Z list. This way you can have a few at the top. So for example, um, let me add another one. I'll add the Netherlands. I can save this. I can also drag and drop this in the way that I would like it to display, of course. And so now if I go to my reservation, we we'll use the same one as an example. You'll see here that under nationality, these are going to show at the top and as well for country. This is the case in the guest card as I've been able to show now, but during guest mobility, if you're collecting address, this will work as well. And also on the kiosk. Then we continue with the release for 5.68. Um, the report inbox has a new message that we display now when there's no reports. So if I move into reports and then report inbox, you'll see here uh, the new message, no reporting your inbox, you haven't requested any reports today, change the report request date or run a new report and you'll see that this is marked in green so that I can continue and create a new report. Um, if I change the date, you'll see that you haven't requested any reports for that specific date. Then the last one, um, I'm going to just grab the release notes. Um, those are relating to our APIs. Um, this is mainly information for uh, our partners, but we just want to highlight it uh, here as well. Um, so we have new parameters added to get reservation and get reservation summary APIs. Um, a lot of text that you can see here, uh, but basically we've added uh, two new query parameters. Uh, which is the from date description and the to date description. And then the get API calls will behave the following way. You'll see the from date, the to date, and the date filter um, with some additional information um, on how this can be used. All right. Um, those were all the topics of the three uh, releases. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Natasha. Um, I'd now like to turn over the floor for questions. Remember, you can submit questions through the question box in the middle of the control panel. So I don't see any questions yet, but I'll give everyone a few seconds to enter those. All right, since I'm still not seeing any questions, I'll switch back to my screen. Thank you, Erin. Yeah, thank you. Um, so since um, I'd now like to take to the floor to offer some final thoughts. So today we explained how to configure add-on bundles and add-on tax bundles, demonstrated how to create group shared notes, showed that a group notes action type is recorded in the group activity log, demonstrated the new way to refund credit card transactions from the guest bill, explained how to create a guest bill entity without routing, illustrated language, title, works at, and opt-in fields for the guest card, discussed updated enforced country sort order, discussed new incomplete rate tag, illustrated the update to the reports inbox, no reports message, showed the display of weekly add-on count during reservation creation, explained stay and hitch IB enhancements, covered updated iHotelier travel click message types, and finally, we discussed enhancements to connect APIs. With that, I'd like to conclude our presentation. Thank you all for coming, and if you have any additional questions, feel free to email me at erin.fisher at stayintouch.com. Thanks again. <laughs>